Hey guys, welcome to another video of mine. Um, so if you follow me on Instagram, you probably know that I've changed up a lot of my stuff and my rifle pretty much does not look like my rifle used to be. Um, as you know, if you are subscribed to my channel, I used to have a Mark 18 as my primary rifle and I was just, I was having a lot of problems when I first got my suppressor with it being over gassed and I ran into a lot of reliability problems. Um, there's a whole slew of comments on AR15.com as to, you know, the Daniel Defense upper being over gassed. Well, it just wasn't working for me. Um, your miles may vary. Uh, you might get an upper that works just fine. That's cool. Mine did not. I was having failure probably uh, once every 10 rounds and it was just really annoying. Um, as you can see in this clip I'm about to play you, um, I had a failure doing a drill and that's kind of when I decided that I was done with that. So, I took the most valuable parts of that Mark 18 upper, the rail, and I sold it because I wanted to do an SPR clone. Now, you will notice right off the bat, no, this is not a clone, um, but this does use clone parts. Um, I went with this rifle because this is what I wanted. I was, you know, fed up, I was angry, whatever. I'm not done with cloning, but I was just fed up and angry at the time. So, I was like, you know, I'm going to make whatever I want how I want because I want it. Well, I went with my favorite looking rail. I really like the aesthetics of the Knight's free floating rail, or RAS, I'm sorry. Um, it is the rail that's on the Mark 12. I really like it. It's a free floating handguard. Um, it uses this, um, this handguard retaining nut. Um, so it doesn't have a monolithic upper, but really that doesn't bother me too much. But this is a re really nice upper. It came with three hand er, rail panels, like this one on this side. Um, That's not an issue for me, because I, I pick a tinny rail doesn't really bother me. But I went with this rail because I liked it. Some of the criteria that I wanted in my new rifle was a 14 and a half inch barrel, because I used to have um, my clone M4A1 was a 14 and a half, and I really loved the way it shot. And that was one of my criteria. Another criteria of mine was a mid-length gas system. Now, I was looking around for barrels when I was looking for a 14 and a half inch barrel, and I came across CAC Industry. I know everyone thinks that Colt is the best barrel, or Daniel Defense is the best barrel, whatever. I did some research on it. Um, CAC Industry makes them out of Green, Mar uh, Green Mountain barrel blanks, and so they're, um, they're reliable, they're fairly accurate, and most of all, it was like $120 versus the Colt was like $250. So the name didn't really bother me very much. Just 14 and a half inch mid-length barrel. And that is what I went with. As you can see, this CAC barrel has a light profile. Um, it kind of has a taper close to the muzzle. Um, that is because I wanted sort of a lighter weight barrel so it wouldn't be super heavy. I mean, this is a this is a heavy rifle, but um, it's not a heavy barrel at all. So you might ask, why did I choose to go with a mid-length gas system versus a standard carbine or maybe even longer for a rifle? Um, I did some research about the the use of a mid-length suppressor or a mid-length gas system for suppressor use, and a lot of people were saying it was very reliable and it was also very soft shooting. And with a rifle gas length, I didn't want to go any longer than 14 and a half. So it seemed like mid-length was my best option. So that is why I chose the mid-length gas system. The next part of this build that people might ask me about is the Burris MTAC. I know this is you know not an expensive fancy scope or whatever, but I got this in a trade and I started using it and I decided it works pretty well for me. It's a, a one to four power. It goes from, I'm sorry, one and a half. It's not a true one power. Um, it, it says one power, but it kind of looks like 1.1 to me. But it has the throw lever on it, so it's nice and smooth. It goes all the way up to four power. And it has a nice illuminated reticle 
in it that is perfect for what I need. Um, I did have an EOTech on this, but I wanted something more suited for a 14 and a half inch barrel. Um, so, you know, four times magnification is pretty good for those 400, 500 yard shots. Uh, pretty much all the internals have stayed the same from when I had the Mark 18. Um, the Timney trigger I've been using forever. It's not failed me yet. Um, get the bolt carrier is a nickel boron plated carrier. I'm not sure who makes it, but that has been fantastic. And if you're thinking about running nickel boron carrier, I would definitely advise it because I mean, you can see how dirty it is right now. Just a wipe of the finger, and it just wipes right off. Um, not that cleaning a rifle is important, but that's pretty nice. So that's pretty much this rifle in a nutshell. It's just the fact that I wanted to get a rifle that I wanted and that shot well and that didn't fail on me. Um, I've been shooting this rifle in this configuration for about 400 rounds and it's been flawless, never had a failure, and it's just, it's really smooth to shoot. The mid-length cast system is really nice in mitigating recoil and 14 and a half inch barrel, I just, it, I think it's the magic, the magic number. It seems really nice. It balances well with the suppressor on it. Um, it's not too long, um, but I really like it. So for you out there that are looking into building a rifle and maybe have a particular interest in clones, but don't want to shell out the money for clones, I feel you. I understand. Cloning is expensive, whatever. For me, the attraction to cloning was just the fact that all the parts looked really aesthetically pleasing. I just love the look. I love the look of the pec. PEC-15, um, you know, the Knights rails, the Daniel Defense rails, um, I just really liked the look. But I didn't like that I was having to compromise on some things that I didn't want, um, so I decided to build what I like. So I guess my message for you guys out there that are in my situation, um, just do whatever you want. I mean, if you want to go out for that 100% clone, just go for it. Don't make, any, don't make any compromises because you're not going to be happy. I wasn't happy, you know, not having a true clone. And then I just said, you know, forget about it. I'm just going to build what I want. So I understand and just build what you want. Build what makes you happy. It's your rifle. It's your money. Who cares about how many Instagram likes you get? Thank you guys for watching this video. And leave a comment below if you think that I should paint this rifle. Um, and if you do, how should I paint it? See you guys next time. Thanks.